The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste. A house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebub that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace with his, possess his possessions are safe, but when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through the arid regions searching for, the, for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, he finds it swept clean and put in order, then it goes and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of the man is worse than the first, the gospel of the Lord. The most important thing we can really do is ask God to come into our hearts. We ask the Lord and his Holy Spirit to fill us. Because when our spirit is filled, there is no room for the devil. When we have baptism in the church, we ask some questions. And they go something like this. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. And it's really important for us to reject the enemy. And you know how you can tell when someone is influenced by the devil? When they try and divide people. When they try and get people to think that others are different than themselves. Like the great sin of racism, right? When these people think, I'm better than this other person because my skin color is different. Or I'm better than this person because I believe better than they do. And you know that they're from the devil when they try and divide people. When they try and even divide those who have stuff and those who, have don't, who don't. If they say, yeah, those rich people, they're bad because they have money, so we need to take it from them. That's wrong. What we need to do is we need to approach those people who have money and say, hey, will you share your money with those who have less? And more often than not, they'll do it. You know, you've heard me say that little story, right? Would it be right for me to take your lunch money even if I'm giving it to someone who doesn't have it, right? That would be wrong. I can't take your lunch money. That would be a sin. It's called stealing. But I can't ask you to say, hey, can you share some of your lunch money so this other person over here can have enough food? But we have people who are influenced by the devil who want to say, I can take from the rich and then I'll give it to the poor people and that will make it all okay. That's wrong. We can't do that. That's not how we are as Christians. We need to respect people's property. We need to respect what others have. But if we're blessed with having a lot, then we have a moral obligation before God to share that with other people, to let our heart be moved to conversion. In the gospel today, we hear how Jesus is casting out demons, and they're jealous. They're saying, oh, he only casts out demons because he's one of them. And Jesus just says, that would be stupid. Why would I hurt my own team member, my own teammate? That doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't. Jesus loves us so much. But you know what? We can only do that if we're open to God's Spirit. And God won't push himself on anybody. You have to ask God to come to you. You have to be open to his ways and say, Lord, teach me. Help me understand what you would have me do. 
And if you allow the Spirit of God into your hearts, then you will fight for life. You will defend the lives of others. You will look for those who are weak and vulnerable and come to their defense. You will stand in the way of the bullies who try and hurt the innocent and try and manipulate and overcome other people. You will defend the voiceless. You will be pro-life. So my friends, let us pray that God will help us see clearly enough that we invite that Holy Spirit to come into our hearts so that we can be bold and loving and compassionate and kind. Boldness is not being a jerk. Boldness is not beating the faith into other people. It's inviting them to reflect more deeply on the true, the good, and the beautiful. And if they allow that into their hearts, they won't be bitter, they won't be angry, they won't have hatred directed towards anyone, but they will be instruments of peace. And that's what our country needs right now. It is so divided, and we as Christians need to unite it under the banner of life and help the world understand what is true, good, and beautiful. And it begins with you. Because remember, each and every one of you is an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And guys, what will happen if we pursue perfection? We will achieve excellence. And why do we want to achieve excellence? To glorify God. Thank you. Be holy so that you can be happy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the upcoming elections that all people who will vote will have an enlightened conscience and will vote to defend life. Be converted or lose their power so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. For an end to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick and the suffering, that they may be healed and that God may console them, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray that all those who are planning violence or destruction of any kind, that their plots be uncovered and that they not resort to that violence and harm that causes so much pain in our society, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.